Hello viewers, I am Dr. Mala Das Sharma. Welcome you to my channel Kim Philik. Let's start 48th episode of Teaching Chemistry Through Riddle. Here is our riddle number 48 which goes like this. I am white. I play the most important role in a well-known volumetric titration. My commercial name is more popular than my chemical name. You have seen the marvelous view of natural sunset. I can make the similar view of setting sun or chemical sunset at your laboratory. When you make artificial sunset using me, a system consisting of finely divided particle of diameter 1 to 100 nanometer dispersed in a medium is formed. So, this is riddle number 48. Now, let's see the question. First primary question is, who am I? Answer is sodium thiosulfate. Another primary question is, what is my commercial name? Answer is hypo. Second question, what is the well-known volumetric titration referred here? Answer is this idometry. Idometry is the indirect method which deals with the titration of iodine liberated in a reaction by sodium thiosulfate. Actually, in this method, an oxidizing agent such as potassium dichromate or other oxidizing agent is used to liberate iodine quantitatively, which is titrated to its standard hypo solution. Third question, what is the reaction that can be projected as artificial sunset? The answer is, a reaction between sodium thiosulfate and dilute hydrochloric acid which results the formation of colloidal sulfur. So this is the equation. Sodium thiosulfate and dilute hydrochloric acid, it forms the colloidal sulfur along with the other products like sulfur dioxide gas, sodium chloride and water. Next question. What is colloidal solution? Any system having the fine particle of any substance of diameter 1 to 100 nanometer range when dispersed in a medium that is known as the colloidal system. And in the colloidal system or in the colloidal solution, the size of this particle which is dispersed in another substance that size should be 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer. If the size of the particle is less than 1 nanometer, then true solution is formed. Between 1 to 100 nanometer means it gives colloidal solution and more than 100 nanometer means it forms the suspension. Now, so colloidal system is consisting of two phases. That means it is a heterogeneous system. And one phase is scattered or dispersed in the other phase. The phase which is scattered or dispersed, that is called the dispersed phase or internal phase or the discontinuous phase. So, this is the dispersed phase. The particle of this phase is dispersed or scattered in this another medium that is called dispersion medium. So, when this dispersed phase is added to this dispersion medium and already I told you what will be the particle size and then this colloidal solution is resulted. And the phase in which the scattering or dispersion is done is called the dispersion medium or external phase or continuous phase. Now, each of the two phases of a colloidal solution may be solid, liquid or gas. So, this is the chart. 
the dispersed phase is solid dispersion medium also solid name of the colloidal solution is solid sol examples alloys gems colored glass etc when dispersed phase is solid and dispersion medium is liquid most common that is called sol like paints inks egg white etc when dispersed phase is solid and dispersion medium is gas it is aerosol like smoke dust etc similarly when the dispersed phase is liquid and the dispersion medium is gas then also that is aerosol say mist fog clouds like that so many varieties are there and if the dispersion medium is water then the sol is known as the hydrosol now next question what is spindle effect see when a light is passed through a true solution it is not visible on the other hand when the light is passed through a colloidal solution then it is visible like a bright band or bright streak and this phenomena is called the tyndall effect and the illuminated path is known as the tyndall cone so tyndall effect is the scattering of light from the surface of this colloidal particle so see this flash light is passed through this true solution it is not visible when it is passing through this colloidal solution then it is scattered from the surface of the colloidal particle or it interacts with the colloidal particle and thereby this light path as well as these particles are made visible so tyndall effect the scattering of light by the particles in a colloid or suspension and the light collides with the colloidal particle so and making this particle as well as part of the light visible now condition for tyndall effect the condition diameter of the particle in the dispersed phase should not be smaller than that of the wavelength of the light used so diameter of the particle should be larger than than that of the wavelength of the light used another one the difference between the refraction indices of the dispersed phase and the dispersion media must be appreciably high and this condition is fulfilled by lyophobic colloid actually colloidal solutions are of two types one is lyophilic another one is lyophobic lyophilic means there is attraction between the dispersed phase and dispersion media but in lyophobic that attraction is not there attraction is less between the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium and so it is difficult to prepare the lyophobic salts and lyophobic salts are unstable easily coagulates and so tyndall effect is well known for this lyophobic salts or lyophobic colloids now sixth question why the reaction of sodium thiosulfate and dilute hydrochloric acid can produce the effect of sunset on the screen when the reaction is performed by keeping the reaction mixture on the overhead projector now in the reaction already we have seen sodium thiosulfate with dilute hydrochloric acid it produces colloidal sulfur see initially only sodium thiosulfate solution is there so the transmitted light the light transmitted through this solution transmitted light will be white but as soon as you are adding this dilute hydrochloric acid colloidal sulfur started forming when the size of the colloidal sulfur is very small then that light of shorter wavelength gets scattered or reflected scattered and reflected okay and slowly when the size of the sulfur colloidal sulfur grows then what will happen light of the larger wavelength also started scattered then so what happened that yellow light scattered and then the transmitted light will, will be looked as uh, say orange 
then from orange it will change to red then finally black that means all the lights are scattered no transmitted light so this chemical sunset gets its name from the fact that light transmitted to the solution changes from white to yellow to orange to red to black similar to the sun setting in the sky now let's see the demonstration process here what you have to do here the source of light is this light of this overhead projector and this platform of this projector is covered with the heavy paper and then which has a circular part of the same size of this container where you have kept the solution or initially sodium thiosulfate solution only and then the sodium thiosulfate solution that is a clear solution is taken in this container and initially this will be completely colorless because it is a true solution and the transmitted light is projected on the screen so the transmitted light from the solution will appear as white that means in this uh, room is darkened and the projector is turned on the transmitted light will appear as white okay and the solution appears colorless if you see from the side because no light is scattered no so from the side if you watch it will be colorless then what happen as you are adding hydrochloric acid colloidal sulfur form and go and uh, grows initially shorter wave as i already told you shorter wavelength of light is scattered and the longer wavelength of light is transmitted so that color will be color which is projected color means transmitted light which is projected on the screen it will appear as yellow then yellow also will be scattered then it will appear as orange then orange also will scatter as this colloidal sulfur particle grows longer wavelength light also scattered then it will become this red color and finally all the lights will be scattered and the transmitted there will be no transmitted light it will become black so the transmitted light changes from white to red eventually no light is transmitted all the lights are scattered so if you see from the side it will appear as appear as white now some examples of scattering of light though it is not related to the riddle just uh, for our interest let's see sky is blue see altitude landscape and climate change dramatically as you move across the globe but one factor remains nearly ubiquitous all of earth's diversity is blanketed under a blue sky but why is the sky blue let's see see what happened light coming from the sun when it enters to the earth atmosphere it interacts with the particles of the earth atmosphere and then what happen because of this interaction different wavelength of light gets scattered and shorter wavelength of light are more likely to be scattered or absorbed or and re-emitted in a different direction Finally, the molecules in the earth atmosphere is largely nitrogen and oxygen which scatter the blue and violet light every direction through a phenomena called rayleigh scattering so blue and violet means they are shorter wavelength light they are more easily scattered immediately scattered by the oxygen and nitrogen molecules throughout okay so entire sky looks blue that's what makes the sky blue why is the ocean blue same reason here also the ocean water is longer wavelength of lights are absorbed such as red orange yellow and the shorter wavelengths of lights the blue violet indigo they are scattered and reflected and which results the appearance of the blue color of the ocean 
Now, scattering of light, everyday examples. See here, xenon or LED headlight produce a beam of intense white light. Okay? And when this light passes through the gases in the headlight, headlight bulb, it scatters. And when it scatters, it produces a visible beam that can illuminate the road ahead effectively. Why milk is white? All of us know that milk is white because these protein and fat molecules present in the milk, their diameter is larger than the wavelength of the light. So light gets scattered from this Particles. This is a colloidal solution from the particles of this colloidal solution. All wavelength of light scatters and the milk appears opaque and white. Actually, the casein protein and some of the fats in the milk, they scatter and deflect uniformly all wavelengths of light. That's why this result, the milk being fairly opaque and appearing white. So, this is all about video number 48. Thank you.